For nearly 12 years, many of the creative minds behind Ed's World have been working on a brand new TV show. It was planned to take place in the same universe as Ed's World, with the continuing narrative to be broadcast on national television, and it is a show that is still in development right now. This is a show called Super Average. If you've been following my channel for a long time, then this probably isn't the first time you've heard me talk about Super Average. I mentioned it once when talking about its development, but just left it at that. But there is more than a decade's worth of information out there, and we are going to be covering it in detail here today. Most of the information I'm about to give you here is sourced from Thomas Ridgewell himself, as he is the creator of the show, but I'm also going to be covering the people who have worked alongside him, as well as a few other members of the community. Also know that some of this information is just speculation, and may prove itself to be wrong after the publishing of this video. I've tried to build this video mostly on first-hand sources, but some of it will almost certainly be incorrect or outdated if and when Super Average ever gets the green light. Also, I'm using a lot of other people's fan art in this video, and I'll try and give credit to them on screen or in the description below. So, to start with context, which you may already know, back in 2008, Thomas Ridgewell conceived of an idea for an animated show. He wanted it to be about two irresponsible teenage superheroes, and he was going to call his new show Super Average. The idea manifested itself in his mind, and he soon sketched up an idea for the pilot episode. He pitched it to Ed Gould of Ed's World fame, who was interested in taking it further. Ed was of course an animator, and though he hadn't really made a proper name for himself yet, Thomas was very much a comedian and creative mind, and together they worked with a writer to get a pilot script completed. But unfortunately, Ed contracted cancer, and due to his failing health they were forced to put Super Average on hold. And though they were able to continue working on their already successful webtoons, Ed's World and Asdaf movie, Ed passed away in 2012 from complications related to his cancer, and work on Super Average was ceased indefinitely. But, dear viewer, indefinitely does not mean forever, and since then Tom has worked with several other writers and artists, so the show is very much still in development. Some of the names that you might be familiar with are of course Thomas Ridgewell, co-writer, co-producer and director of Ed's World Legacy, and the creator of the Tom Scar YouTube channel, Eddie Bowley, co-writer, producer and director for Ed's World Legacy, and the artist Trophy Sketcher on DeviantArt, better known by the name Tommy Bear. I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to steal your username, I just stole the bear's name because I'm really bad at coming up with other usernames. So that's the history of the show's creation, but what about the actual content of the show? Well, here is where it gets a little bit complicated. As far as I know, the original idea was that it would star two boys, called Chris and Andy. I say, as far as I know, because I got this information from the Villains Wikia. Yeah, like I said, I couldn't make this video entirely first-hand sources. I understand that fan wikias are not a perfect source of information, but here we don't really have much of a choice. The page mentions a comic by the artist Red Meal, or sometimes just called Red, and it actually links to the comic. But when I click on it, it just takes me to an empty DeviantArt page. Now, I have no doubt in my mind that these comics actually did exist, because you can actually find the first three issues of the comic easily on Google Images. And also on Red's DeviantArt page, she says that there were 11 volumes by the end of 2012 at least. But unfortunately her Twitter pages and her DeviantArt pages and her Tumblr pages show nothing of the sort for me. So this unofficial wiki is the best we have, but it's good enough for what we need and I'll talk about why none of it really matters in just a second. So the page says, Chris and Andy are the protagonists from the Ed's World comic series Super Average. They are a duo of superheroes with abilities of telekinesis and stretching their bodies. However, their ignorance usually causes more damage than the accidents or villains they try to stop. This wiki is about villains, so it focuses disproportionately on a character's negative aspects to make them seem more villain-like. There is a similar page for pretty much all Edsworth characters. We're just working with what we've got here. It also calls Super Average an Edsworth comic, which isn't quite right. It 
would be like calling The Simpsons a Futurama show. It has some of the same creative people and a little bit of character crossover, but it's not quite right. But we'll get to that a bit later. It also goes into detail about what happens in the comic, and it seems to line up with what we already know. The first paragraph, under history, describes the first few panels of the comic, the one we saw with the plane crash and the hot dog stand, and it goes a little bit beyond that. The two superheroes are sent to the mayor, who accuses them for putting 63 people in the hospital. Because of the plane crash, they prevented and then caused. Chris and Andy attempt to defend themselves, as they once stopped the evil litterer by breaking his two arms and setting him on fire. Okay, how could any studio say no to this? It then goes on to talk about the rest of the comic, up to where it had been finished. And it all sounds pretty good, you can give it a read for yourself if you want to. So now that we've been introduced to the main characters, I can tell you that none of it matters. In 2016, Tom said in a blog post about the show, I'd outgrown the old screenplay from 2009. The characters seemed shallow and indistinguishable from one another. If Super Average was ever going to happen, it was going to look a lot different from my original vision. Working with Eddie, we refined the premise, retooled the characters, plotted the episodes, and generally brought the damn thing back to life again. And retool they did, because the main characters don't look like this anymore. They look like this. And I could not be happier with this development. The original character designs are fine, but nothing groundbreaking. I look at these guys and I see Dan from Dan vs and a blonde Shaggy Rogers. I can tell why you might find these characters shallow based just on the way they're drawn. Then you look at these new designs and you know what these characters are like. And you can tell they are much more likeable. Look at the colours, look at the outfits, look at the poses. These are solid character designs. You can also see them alongside modern shows like Steven Universe as opposed to the dirty late 2000s art style. Chris is almost unrecognisable from his original design, and Andy was scrapped entirely and replaced with this new character who for now I'm going to call Jade. This isn't the first time Tom Scar has used a gender swap for one of his characters to help bring it new life. Crash Zoom originally starred two men, but they decided to change one of the characters to be female, Lucy and I think that the show is much better because of it. Her straight man character is why Crash Zoom works as well as it does, and something as simple as making a character a woman goes a long way to making them distinguishable and unique. We get a few shots of these characters in action from one of Tom's vlogs, where he talks about his life goals. Here he says that he wants to create a cartoon for TV, while frames of Super Average flash briefly on screen. I'll play the clip for you in its entirety, and then dissect what he says as well as the images afterwards. Secondly, I want to create a cartoon, a real mainstream broadcasted cartoon, something up there with Adventure Time, Steven Universe, Gravity Falls, kid friendly on the surface but with a complex dark underlying narrative. I want to capture the imaginations and hearts of millions and just bring people joy and tell an awesome cool story. So there's a lot to unpack here. First of all, let's look at the images themselves, which all look amazing. The first image seems to show our two characters reenacting the scene from the original pitch with the aeroplane, which probably means it's not completely abandoned, as Tom suggested. We also get to see the heroes in costume for the first time. The character in blue is Chris, as shown by the emblem on his chest, and he has telekinesis, so he's able to keep the airplane up in the air. Then we have this new character, and she has a J written on her costume, hence why I called her Jade earlier. Notice that it's also got this flame symbol on it, which might suggest this character's superpowers allow her to control fire. The original duo apparently has some combination of telekinesis, stretching ability, and finger guns, and superhuman strength. And though this is all well and good, being able to literally use the force seems to outweigh any of those other powers. So if they changed up her character to do stuff that Chris can't, like summon and control fire, then I would be very happy. This also makes me think they don't have secret identities as they have their first initial plastered across their chest, making the mask seem kind of pointless. Next we have this image of the two actually fighting crime. Here we can see that Chris has the ability to fly, probably a perk of his telekinesis, and Jade is doing, well, Literally nothing. Then we have this shot of the duo on the moon with these things. 
Oh my god, you crossed a cat and a dog and you gave it the ability to give you hugs. You may have created something that is cuter than nature would ever allow. How have you done this? Seriously though, a space episode is always fun and I'm curious to know what they're doing on the moon. But we all know what you're most interested in. That last image. The hand. Towards hand. Red leader's hand. Right, so I'm sure that about 99% of you already know all of this stuff already, so real quick. Tord is an Earthworld character, he left the show, he came back later, this time more evil and with more giant robot. Several years later, he's the ruler of Earth. Clicky clicky linky in the description. So how exactly does Tord and Red Leader link into Super Average? The idea, as I've mentioned in the past, was to have the main villain in Crash Zoom be this Darth Vader looking figure called Red Leader. The implication, unsurprisingly, being that this is what Tord's character had gone on to become after leaving Ed's world. Tom and Ed both thought that this was a good idea, and they even snuck in a reference to the character in one of Ed's animations. Huh, it's a good job Red Leader had a second time travel device. This was taken further in Ed's world legacy, hiding these hints to Red Leader in individual episodes and actually showing what was arguably the birth of Red Leader at the end of the final episode. So yes, the robot arm in this image proves that our main characters are squaring off with the one, the only, Red Leader himself. The Life Goals video featuring this image came out just over a month after the Edswold finale, and he talked more about it a couple years later in both his blog and his vlog. In his blog, he wrote an entire post about Red Leader, and he showed off some of the original artwork, he talked about the history behind the character, and he finished it off by saying that the character had been scrapped and will probably never be seen again. The character has been scrapped and will probably never be seen ever again. Right, so I feel like we need to talk about this because the blog itself is a little bit confusing and kind of contradicts itself. So let's just go through this. Firstly, why would he want to scrap this character? There was unfortunately some backlash when making Tord the main villain of the last Edsworld episode, and though there were reasons for this, there were many who saw it as disrespectful to the original voice actor of the same name. There were other problems that arose with Tord's return and Red Leader's integration, but this is probably the main one. So because of this, Tom decided that it would be in everyone's best interest to remove Red Leader from Super Average. But at the same time, he wants to keep the character. He writes, I've decided to scrap the character of Red Leader. The design and character will no doubt be repurposed if Super Average begins but Red Leader will never be seen again. So basically, when given the option to either scrap the character or keep the character, Tom has decided to do both. So what's probably going to happen is that this big red Darth Vader figure is going to appear in the show, but he won't be Tord, and he probably won't even be called Red Leader. This is what the post seems to imply, but at the end, Tom says that he's leaving the designs there in memory. I honestly have no idea what he's doing with the character. It's a huge mess, and I kind of have to sympathise with him. He goes into more detail in one of his blogs. Last week, I let it get to me. Side note, this video is a must-see for anyone who is critical of Edward Legacy and Tom's management of the show. From 1911 onwards, he talks for over 10 minutes about the legacy, and he finishes off by talking about Red Leader himself. So have a watch of that video if you ever get the chance. So what does the future look like for our boy in red? Who knows? I do wonder how much of Super Average owes its concept towards departure. Tom says that he had his idea just before the first Asnath movie came out. So basically any time between Tor's last episode and his departure in 25 feet. I like to think that the entire premise of Super Average is based on the joke that Tord becomes an evil supervillain. The idea of a shared universe is one which I love, but if they feel that they need to take it in a new direction then that is entirely understandable. Now to talk about what Tom actually says here, back in his goals video. He wants a real, broadcast cartoon up there with shows like Adventure Time and Gravity Falls which were both still airing at the time. He wants it to be suitable for kids, but maybe have some darker undertones. And he wants to tell a story. From the sound of it, it seems like he wants to tell a series-long narrative or several series-long story arcs 
over multiple pull individual episodes, which sounds pretty awesome to me and is a lot easier to do in a world where streaming is the norm. Ed's World proved that Tom and his writers know how to write a funny and action-packed story with a satisfying payoff. And to see that on a TV level would be spectacular. And that all leaves us with the question of when we can expect the show to come out. And that I cannot tell you. The show has been in some stage of production almost continuously since 2008, but animation more so than most other art takes a very long time to complete especially with so many alterations since the initial pitch. But we do know that it is still in production. Less than a year ago, April 2019, Tom released the last month to his vlogging channel, and he ended the video with an image of this whiteboard filled with his future projects. Some of the projects, such as Bible Time and Complete History 3, have been released since the publishing of that video. At the bottom, in the Beyond section, we can see the words Super Average Treatment Script Made, Treatment being the name of the pilot episode. There are also a few other bits here like the word Spacebar, which may be a hint to another episode. There's actually a lot on this whiteboard which I would love to unpack, but I feel like there's been enough speculation for one day. In terms of the team behind the show, that's also still quite a mystery. Again, we know some of the writers and some of the character designers but beyond that, it's pretty much unknown. The Edsworld team made a call for British voice actors in 2010, but with the scale of a mainstream TV show, I'm guessing they'd want to bring in industry professionals and an entire animation team. Although, Tom, if you're watching and you need someone to voice while your background characters, uh, get in touch. We also have the question of how to watch it, if and when it ever comes out. In the UK, our choice of animated shows is very limited, because we don't really have that many networks which will air animated shows. If you pay for satellite TV, then you get Cartoon Network and a few other American channels, but if you just pay for the standard TV license, then your choice is really either CBBC, CITV, or POP. Yes, we have TV licenses here in the UK, it's a whole thing. I personally think the best outcome would be to pitch the show to an online streaming site like Netflix. That way it would be available internationally to everyone all at the same time, unlike some other streaming services, and make keeping up with the story arcs a whole lot easier. Plus, who really watches broadcast television now anyway? And that's about everything we know about Super Average, a superhero cartoon professionally made about two irresponsible teenagers fighting someone who may or may not be called Red Leader. We have no idea how long this will take, or if it even will ever get to us, but I'm confident that one day it will, in one form or another. We've seen the team dip their toe into concepts similar to this in the past, and I am so excited to see where they take this. But there is the possibility that Super Average will never come out, that it will be in development forever and it will never get released. And unfortunately, that is the case for some things. We've seen projects go into development hell and never come out the other side, or come out as miserable failures. And on the other end of the spectrum, we've seen beautiful works of art more brilliant than was thought possible from them. And we are at a stage where Super Average could go either way. It could never come out, we could never see it, or it could be one of the greatest shows ever released. Only time will tell.